So does all of this lead to a crisis of confidence in our government? Let's debate that. Tony Sayeg is a former press aide to GOP vice presidential nominee Jack Kemp and president of Talk Radio News Service. Mark Hanna is a former aide to both the John Kerry and Barack Obama presidential campaigns and a political analyst. And Dan Henniger is deputy editorial page editor of the Wall Street Journal. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. Daniel, I want to start with you because you published a piece yesterday in the Wall Street Journal which you titled The Sum of All Fears. Can you explain what you believe the cumulative effect of all of these scandals has on Americans? Well, it's not just the cumulative effect of this, uh, Allison. It's uh, much else that's going on. I quoted a Pew poll that was released only in January which uh, said that 53 percent of Americans now regard the federal government as a threat to their rights and their freedom. This isn't saying we think government's too big. A threat to their rights and freedom more than half the people in the United States? There's obviously a problem of some sort here. And we had the president just last week after the, NR, uh, the uh, surveillance uh, uh, leaks broke saying that, look, we have a lot of oversight. We have the executive branch, the judiciary, the legislative branch. We have a lot of oversight. And if these people can't be trusted, then to quote him, we have some problems here. Well, we have some problems here because the IRS scandal makes it clear that the government was leaning on people who were merely organizing to commit politics. And I thought uh, Director Mueller's answers there were, were pretty astounding and troubling that the, now we've got the director of the FBI saying he doesn't know what's going on. And just a week or so ago, we had the former head of the IRS saying he had no idea of what was going on in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't people be distrustful of a government that talks like that? Uh, Mark, I want to bring you in because you're a Democrat. Obviously, you've had your finger on the pulse of various Democratic important campaigns, including um, Barack Obama's. Do you think that Democrats are OK with the direction that the country is, is going in? I think Democrats and Republicans both both are, uh, have trouble with the federal government, and I think Dan's editorial and, and reporting is important here. But it's also important to distinguish when he talks about losing faith in the federal government. The federal government is comprised of both the executive branch, obviously, Barack Obama and his administration, and Congress. And so what you see here is the president's approval rating is actually holding steady right around 50 percent, while congressional Republicans have an approval rating somewhere down, like one in four Americans approves the job they're doing. Now, I think I happen to think that the Oversight Committee has a very important task ahead of it to uh, you know, investigate uh, any appearance of impropriety, especially in, uh, with the IRS situation. But the problem that Democrats like me have, and the reason we lose faith in the federal government, is when we see Darrell Issa, the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, making these broad accusations, hurling these accusations against the administration, mm -hmm. and then weeks later not being able to come forward with any evidence that links uh, what happened in, in the IRS to anybody in the administration itself. Even a conservative Republican that worked in uh, the IRS Cincinnati office told Representative Cummings, the, the person that that uh, the congressional uh, uh -huh. the, the representative yeah. was quoting, told him that there was no link. A conservative Republican said uh -huh. there was no link with, uh, with the sure, IRS but, uh, in Washington I mean, Mark, or anybody uh, in the Obama administration. As I think administration. you know, the investigation is ongoing. They are still trying to figure out who gave the order. And part of the crisis in confidence is that there doesn't seem to be any accountability. People aren't held responsible. Nobody has yet been fired with the IRS. I want to bring in Tony. Uh, what do you make of whether or not there's a crisis, a real crisis of confidence in this? Or is it sometimes too much for all of us to keep all of this in our heads? And so Americans just sort of have to go back to their, their household, their own household economy and their own to-do list. Well, I'm sure Americans would rather focus on other things. But again, there is a cumulative effect here. And it's the weight of all this dysfunction happening at once. And I think it's very astounding. I think that word was used very appropriately by, by Dan Henniger earlier about uh, Mr. Mueller's testimony, and that goes to not only a crisis in confidence when you have 63 percent of Americans saying they have little or no confidence and trust in their government, that goes to credibility of the Obama administration officials. You had Eric Holder, so you have people say maybe he didn't perjure himself, but he certainly misled um, the congressional committee. He was testifying in front of on but the Tony, uh, doesn't James the Republican Rosen matter. Congress Hold on a second, Mark. Constitute Mark, the government Mark, too? Mark, Mark okay. I never once, I never once interrupted you. Okay, Tony, finish my, your, my Tony, moment finish your here, thought, and then I'll let Mark ask my, my thought is just, my, my thought is very simple. You have the head of the uh, intelligence, central intelligence, who went up, uh, Clapper, 
to a congressional t a committee. A Democratic Senator Wyden actually asked him the question, to which he said, no, no program like we just learned about the NSA is uh, doing with the phone records existed. You have the administration caught in these bold-faced lies. So, of course, people are going to ultimately look at the whole situation and say, we can't trust what is going on in Washington. And because they're all viewing these things at the same time, it does create a crisis of confidence, and it's happening on the president's watch. Mark was absolutely wrong. The average of this president's approval right now is below 46 percent. Some polls show him at 44 percent. He is taking the hit, not just the institutions of government. Mark, what point did you want to make? The point I wanted to make was that, you know, we have the oversight committee, but there's no oversight right now of the oversight committee, so that when some, some body of Congress has an important task like, you know, it, over, checking, keeping an eye on the federal government, on the executive branch, and then loses confidence because it's seen by many Americans as politically motivated, uh, that, that goes to the heart of confidence in the government. And I do agree with something Tony said, that both, America, both Democrats and Republicans are losing faith, but some of that has to do with the fact that we just don't know what happened in this NSA leak case, and some of that is going to come out in the weeks and months ahead, and that will ultimately uh, help us restore government or, or faith in faith in the government. Uh, Dan, I, I want. I'll tell you, we, we found a Pew Research Center poll that showed something fascinating. They looked back at 1958. They went all the way back from today to 1958 about the confidence in government. And in 1960, or mid 60s, I think 1965, it showed that 73% of Americans had confidence in their government. Today, that exact same number, 73%, have distrust in their government. So it went from trust to distrust. Is, is there any way to turn this around, or have we all just become permanently jaded? Well, those were simpler times, to be sure, Allison. And I think it's going to be difficult to turn it around. I think the person with the biggest problem is uh, probably Barack Obama. And I don't so much mean the scandals as his agenda. Barack Obama has been giving speeches for four years about he, how he wanted the government to do a lot of things to make our lives better, in effect, making government bigger. I think the problem he's running into here, Allison, and is suggested by this NSA surveillance scandal, there's a lot of anxiety in the country, not only about the size of government, the regulatory state, but about things like digital surveillance, the fact that, you know, our smartphones and our PCs can be monitored by marketers who will then push advertising at us. And I think the American public is rightly stepping back and saying, we have to draw some lines here or we want to know what we're getting into. And when President Obama keeps saying, trust me, the government can get bigger, it will only do good things, they're saying we have some real doubts about that. Yeah, clearly something needs to change for the American public to feel better about the direction. Dan Henniger, Mark Hanna, Tony Saig, thanks so much for debating it. Thank you, Thank Allison. You. One week after top senators challenged the Veterans Administration, there's still no word on why the agency...